All right, everybody. Here we are live. Let me know if um, y'all can hear me okay. Sorry, I can see that ring light. Actually, let me just move that real quick because that's going to be bothering me for the rest of the stream. So maybe if I put it like on this side, you won't be able to see it. I don't know. Uh, if I move it a little bit this way, like so, and make it invisible. There we go. Now it's between the diplomas. And now you can't actually see it. So I think that's good. Um, let me bring my microphone just a little bit closer. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Sound is I'm waiting for people to kind of tune in. Is the sound okay? Can you guys see me okay? Am I buffering? Is there any, any issues with anything that I need to... address now is the time how's everybody's weekend y'all having a good time We will begin here very shortly. Okay. All right. I think we can start. It's been almost two minutes. So today uh, we're going to be talking about dealing with experts, uh, both the state expert and your own expert if you have one. Just reminding you to please not forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me fix my tie here a little bit. Don't forget to like the video, comment below once it goes uh, public and subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, the So a couple of housekeeping matters that I want to... Thank you, Truth Smackin. Uh, <laughs> and hey, Taz, man. Um, Finally, uh, I'm I'm happy to let you all know that uh, I've been kind of working on this project for a short while. That's maybe why the video has been delayed a little extra, maybe month, not, not month, I'm sorry, an extra week, week or so. We got the, the tape about a couple of weeks ago, and now we're finally publishing it of the, the DUI guy show is what we're calling it. Um, season one, episode one, part one premiered at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday night. And so that was, uh, it's it's the jury instruction arguing, myself, the judge, the prosecutor, they even had the officer there uh, in case we needed to call him for a hearing. But we ended up not having to call him because the, the part of the hearing that we were going to do we actually ended up skipping uh, because I wanted to get to the meat of the, the case rather than trying to uh, finagle something pre-trial because I, I didn't think it was no longer necessary based on the trial strategy that I formulated. So that's why it was supposed to be a whole lot longer. I mean, we were supposed to be there for at least three hours, I think, and we ended up wrapping it all up in 45 minutes or so uh, and cutting out the, the excess that pretty much turn it into a 30 minute YouTube video, which was kind of convenient, kind of nice uh, for you all. And you you got to see the the actual meat of the, the argument without having to deal with all the BS. So that premiered uh, on Thursday, January, excuse me, um, Thursday, February 5th, I think it was, or 6th. Uh, and now that was part one of episode one in season one. Uh, I think we're going to make it so that the season, season one will be for the rest of 2020. And then each year we'll go to season two, season three, season four, and so on. And each episode is going to be the trial within that year. So episode, season one, episode two will be my next trial. Season one, episode three will be my next trial after that in 2020 and so on. 
until December. And then uh, season two, episode one, part one will be my first trial in 2021. I think that's kind of how we're going to be going about it. I don't know if we'll break down seasons uh, in the in the in the future, but we'll see. Again, it all remains open. This is a new project. Who knows? We might even scrap it and do something different or go back to the original. I have no idea how I'm going to be structuring it, but so far the idea has been presented to me. I liked it. I gave the green light, paid for it, and had my video editor um, on top of it. So yeah, I, I agree, Taz, man. It makes it look like a, a movie, like from the 70s movie. And uh, it, it's very, you know, it, it's cute. It's it's interesting. It, it's no longer just, oh, here starts a, a video and we're launching into it. Uh, it it's, it's got like an intro and it's got an outro as well. So anyway, that uh, season one, uh, episode one, part one premiered a couple days ago. And now season one, episode one, Parts two, three, four, five, and six, which is the entire trial from start to finish, is going to premiere tomorrow, starting at noon. So when each part ends, roughly either two minutes later or three minutes later, five minutes later, I try to time it as best as possible, the next part will automatically premiere. So if you, you can watch one part of it, you can watch five minutes of it, you can watch the entire five hours of it. At your leisure, uh, it will obviously remain on YouTube. I'm not taking it down or anything like that. So once all of those parts premiere, one by one, they'll remain and, and be in their own little, um, oh, which reminds me, I think I need to add them to the to the playlist. The first one is in the playlist, but I don't remember if I added the other ones to the playlist. But regardless, they're going to have their own playlist and they're going to start in that, um, they're going to start one by one parts. So parts one through six, if you... Uh, are an impatient person and do not want to and you like to skip around and whatnot, wait until tomorrow around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and you're going to be able to play all six parts back to back to back uh, and skip around as much as you want. Uh, until then, they'll just be premiering, like I said. So uh, that's tomorrow. Now, uh, I'm sorry if I may appear a little bit uh, under the weather. I'm still recovering from uh, a mild illness, but I'm okay. Uh, just my voice is still a little weak, so I'm sorry if I'm not my uh, usual energetic self ahead of time. Uh, I also want to make a note that there will be a podcast. We're going to start another new uh, type of deal again i don't know how we're going to structure it how it's going to work but i'm thinking it's going to be structured like a video hey liberty cause uh it's going to be structured like a podcast and we're going to be doing uh kind of like a, a q a <laughs> you're funny kadori um the, the, the it's going to be like a q a with another individual and again we'll see how it plays out um the the video will premiere it's going to be live it's going to be live streamed it's going to be a podcast tuesday this coming tuesday the 11th i think it's going to be the 11th at 8 p.m uh eastern standard time um so that is uh coming up next after the trial premiering uh tomorrow and then after that we have on the 15th of February, which is next Saturday, I think this topic is going to garner the most views, I anticipate, concurrent views on YouTube, uh, because we're talking about what to do right then and there. This is the most sought after topic, and I've been kind of uh, unintentionally holding on to it and uh, not presenting it just yet, but it will be presented finally February 15th at 6.30, exactly a week from right now we'll be talking about what to do right then and there when the police officer stops you, uh, gives the, the lights go on and you're there in the car and you're, you see those lights and that panic sets in like, Oh my God, he's coming for me. And you're like, well, maybe I smoked some marijuana. Maybe I smoked my vape pen, which has marijuana in it. Maybe 
I, I drank some alcohol. I'm, I'm fine. I think I'm fine. I'm sure I'm fine. I'm not drunk. You know, all those things going through your mind. What do I do? What do I do? How do I don't blow? Don't talk exactly up to one. Shut up. Don't blow. Don't do the test is my, my phrase. Choose to refuse or you will lose. That's another one of my catchphrases. Um, so yeah, that's, we're, we're going to talk about like play by play as to, you, you may remember my video from 2000 and 15, I think it is. It's on YouTube. Uh, why you should always refuse the breathalyzer and all field sobriety tests. Again, this is going to be like that was the more general version. I was still kind of young back then. I I um, I was very very well educated in that topic, but I may not have had like the the direct experience at that time yet, which I really didn't. I, I, I tell it with full sincerity. Now I do, so I can. I'm going to be doing pretty much that talk only live on YouTube rather than in a group of people now having harnessed all this experience under my belt uh, and being able to talk about the topic a whole lot more um, with all that experience underlying uh, my ability to do that. So again, uh, don't forget to like, uh, comment below, subscribe to my channel, uh, hit that bell so you get the notification whenever new videos premiere. Uh, enough housekeeping matters um i don't think there are really any any questions worth noting um i don't practice in tennessee uh, it's better to pay a lawyer because we'll often get you a better deal than the prosecutor will offer airplane 312 uh, yeah so let's dive in <laughs> yes, Rick Jackson. Uh, let's dive in. Okay, shall we? Uh, now, full disclosure, uh, I will be making, by the way, I'll be making uh, timestamps like I do for all my videos so that you'll be able to, to uh, the, the future viewers will be able to skip around uh, so that don't, if they don't want to listen to me ramble for 12 minutes, that's completely fine. I totally understand. Time is precious. Um, so the talk will begin approximately 12 20 uh 12 minutes and 20 seconds we're talking about experts uh and like i said was about to say full disclosure i am probably not the best person to uh be talking about this topic because i've only had a handful of experiences with experts in the courtroom on the stand um so but but the key is even that little experience that i do have i think is enough in the weight of gold to where I can effectively talk about it and efficiently uh, explain it to a layperson, you all, as to what and how it should be done from an attorney's perspective. And as much as I can, maybe give you some ideas for your pro se cases. Uh, but we're, we're dealing with a very, very heavy, complex, a lot of lawyers and including myself in some aspects, do not understand uh, Daubert, if you're a Fry state, if you're a Daubert state, what that means. We are not getting into all of that, okay? That is just going to be, I think, a, a waste of everyone's time. It's going to raise more questions than it's going to give answers to. I want to do a more practical approach as to what it means um, to be an expert. And if you want to supplement this, this video, this by no means is going to be an exhaustive video from start to finish, uh, how to try your first case where you have an expert under any, no circumstances is what I'm trying to do here. Uh, I I'm trying to give you the simplified, um, digest version of what it means to, to have an expert, uh, on your case, either, uh, state side or, or, uh, defense side. So, uh, detailed 48 actually brings a good question, right? As I'm about to start, uh, what defines an expert? An expert is simply an individual who is more well-versed on the topic that they're about to discuss than the average person. So let's say I can talk about concrete. I can read a couple books. I can maybe research, uh, do some research on the, on the internet, watch some YouTube videos, and I can become someone who is well-versed in concrete. Now notice I did not call myself an expert because in order to become an expert in concrete, 
I would need some qualifications, let's say owning a concrete business for 20 years, uh, having an en uh, a civil engineering degree so that where I deal or uh, what's the, the word I'm looking for? I'm sure you guys are, are going to fill in in a second. Uh, uh, yeah, so for the most part, civil engineering degree, somebody who deals in, in maybe if I'm an architect and I design buildings, I understand concrete. Uh, and it would be different than somebody who works in the concrete industry specifically or concretely, pardon the pun. Um, but if I were to be called in to testify as an expert on why a building collapsed in court, I would be the worst person to do it because let's say all I have now, and realistically, I don't have any expert expertise in concrete. I'm just giving an example. But if I, like I said, I were to read a few books, for me to be able to testify as to what is concrete, what its longevity, what is its structure, how long it's supposed to last, and yada, yada, yada. In order for a jury or the court to make an informed decision, I would be the worst person to ask. So how would we go about finding out if I'm the right person? This is called qualifying the witness, where you are setting the base, where you're setting the stage, you're laying the foundation, that's a legal term, laying the foundation. You've heard that, your objection, your honor, the, the, the witness is not qualified to testify. The, the, the attorney has not laid a proper foundation. No problem, let's go back. So what is the foundation? Where did you go to school? How many years did you go to school? Where have you been working since then? What have you been doing since then? How many years have you been doing that? Blah, 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 blah. So somebody, let's go back to the concrete example for a second. Well, I have a, a master's degree in civil engineering. I, um, I uh, have been in the concrete business for 17 years. I own my own construction company. I give uh, monthly talks at our annual concrete mixer. There's another pun for you. I totally Freudian slipped it. Um, and our concrete mixer, we... We uh, talk about, you know, and, and I give I give constant regular talks and in, in, uh, on cases where uh, on, 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 um, excuse me. Uh, at our meetings, I talk about uh, concrete and I'm, I'm well versed in it and so on and so forth. They'll be filling in. Um, uh, they'll be filling in uh, the rest of the blanks and then. The defense or the prosecution would move, or the other party. If it would probably be a civil case, if it's a building collapsing and there's an allegation of negligence, and in, in the example that I have provided, uh, so the the party would move to uh, qualify. This is another legal term, Your Honor. Uh, the defense moves to qualify Mr. Smith as an expert on concrete matters, and then you will begin the game. One of two things will happen. Uh, one, there'll be no objection from the other side. That's the easiest. You now move on. The court will qualify the person, Mr. Smith, as an expert. Now they're an expert on concrete, and they can testify. Oh, well, on such and such date, you know, January 12, 2013, uh, you had the chance to examine the papers of the uh, the building that uh, is in question, blah, 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 blah. What did you observe? And then they'll start talking. Well, I looked it over. Looks like there were structural deficiencies in the construction. The concrete that was used should not have been used. That's the concrete you use in this. They use the concrete that's supposed to use, be used in that, blah, 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 blah. And you will eventually have the testimony that will solidify the, the case for, for whoever is uh, 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 that's probably going to be a, a prosecution's witness. Not, not prosecution. This would be the plaintiff, excuse me, if it's a civil case. Uh, based on the facts that I've given you. So that is, now that the witness has been qualified, they've given their testimony. Now, the other thing that could happen is there could be an objection. Your Honor, we object to um, qualifying the witness as an expert. Such and such and such and such is missing. Now, another thing that could happen is uh, before court, they would hold a what's called a Daubert hearing. I said we're not going to be getting into those too much, but that's to qualify if whatever the witness, the expert witness, the alleged expert witness is going to be testifying about is within, uh, has uh, he has the knowledge, he has the experience, he has the expertise, and it has been peer reviewed. Those are probably not the four exactly, but that's essentially what a Daubert hearing is. 
Um, in DUI cases, we typically don't really hold Daubert hearings. There are occasions where, like right now, I have a case where a prosecutor has himself initially moved for essentially what what is what qualifies a Daubert hearing, but uh, has since retracted his. I, I don't know what his end goal is. What what I'm using the expert for is completely normal, natural. I've had prosecutors do it to me, so now when I'm doing it to them, they don't like it because it hurts. It stings when you're using your their own weapons against them. I get it, I get it. But objection, Your Honor, his witness hurts my case is not a valid objection. Okay, um, so yeah, nice try, but. We'll see. We'll see what the judge says. You never know with these cases where when one judge would let the prosecutor's expert uh, in, then when I try to get the same expert, not the case here, but hypothetically, the same expert in another judge's courtroom, they may say no dice, uh, even if it's on the exact same issue. I'm sure that has happened somewhere at some point. I'm 100 percent. Um, anything that helps the defense is inadmissible by the, <laughs> by, by default, unfortunately, sometimes is what it feels like. Uh, anything that, that hurts the defense is automatically in. Um, so when you learn to play within the rules, it becomes a whole lot more fun when you start beating them at their own game. Um, but anyway, so let's, let's take a DUI case, for example. So what type of experts would you have in, in DUI cases? Uh, Breathalyzer technician is the most common one, the technician that services the machine on a regular basis. Okay. One of my first cases, the first case that I won and the second case that I've tried in Hardin County in 2015, I had this classic example and boy, oh boy, was I not ready for it, but I, I had to do it. I had no choice. Uh, I knew ahead of time that he's going to be called. So that kind of helped me a little bit to kind of prepare me. Um, and I remember, I'll never forget it, uh, the, the prosecution and I, we walk up to the bench and the prosecutor goes, Your Honor, we move to qualify him as an expert witness. Uh, unless the defense has an objection, I would like to skip over that. And I'm standing there thinking, wait a minute, you're... So the whole slew of questions, so where did you go to school? Who are you? Where are you? What are you? How are you? Blah, 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 blah. She asked to skip all of that and dive right into what did you do? And then to have the court qualify him as an expert witness. Now, I saw an opportunity. I didn't even realize I saw an opportunity until about 10 minutes into the questioning. So I kind of like instinctively felt this is probably what you should do. And it's going to work out. But I had, I had no idea what I was planning myself until I realized that I just set the stage for something majestic. Um. So the questioning began, and it's on YouTube. Uh, it's it's the the Hardin County five minute not guilty courtroom nuke. Uh, that was my my first, but not last. I just had my second one. This well, I probably shouldn't. I just ruined it. Too late. Well, <laughs> uh, it was my first three word verdict. You know, there's the one word verdict that's guilty. You have the two word verdict that's not guilty. And then you have the three-word verdict, not guilty. <laughs> the the F-bomb is, is the second word in that. That's a three-word verdict in, in the legal world is what we call it. Uh, and that is when the jury comes back very quickly uh, with a, a, a not guilty verdict. So the, the prosecutor asked the judge... To qualify the expert witness as an expert, I said, okay, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I sat down. She began her questioning, and the questioning was to the extent of immediately diving into what did you do with the machine? What did you da-da-da? And, and it, this is all on YouTube. Like I said, you can feel free to peruse that at your leisure. And I'll probably include a link below if I don't forget. And then... Yes, Lone Waffle. That's exactly the, the case where, yes, that's the one. Um, good memory. <laughs> wow, I have some true fans on here. That's, I did not expect somebody to be able to call it out like that. That's, that's amazing. Thank you, Lone Waffle. That really warms my heart, actually. You have no idea. Thank you. Um, that's it. That's the case. Um, anyway, so she began questioning the, and then when I took, the the 
the podium to ask the cross examine, I saw the opportunity. I became BFFs with the guy. First of all, he really was a cool dude. He was chill. He was very civil. He was not adversarial in any way, shape, or form. He's just there to do his job. He's just a tech guy. He's the maintenance guy. He literally, he comes in. He's like, hey, guys, you know, all police officers and corrections officers around me. So I feel really, really comfortable right now. Not, you know, and I'm just here to service the machine. Yeah, it's me. I'm back. How y'all doing? You know, and now he's like, he's taking the stand and, um, and he has to testify and what he did and how he did it. So I, I try to make friends with the guy. I instinctively, I was just because she was like so mean to her own witness, which I could not understand why. I don't think it was intentional. I, I don't, I really don't. It, it's just, I don't know, whatever. So I, I asked, uh, I asked him, you know, who are you? What are you? Did you go to school? I, I qualified her own witness for her because I saw an opportunity. And so, and I just became friends with him. And then I was like, well, you know, my uh, the, the allegation was that my client regurgitated uh, during the 20 minute observation period. And I think even the officer admitted to it. Uh, and I used that in closing, obviously, and because uh, he blew a 0.087, which was over. And I said, plain, plain English, is it possible when you belch that the number will go up? And he just said, yeah, because that's that's exactly what happens. If you regurgitate, you're no longer getting the full uh, alveolar lung air. You're getting more than that. You're getting stomach contents. And that the obvious answer was, yes, it will go up. And that's why it was pretty much a, a no-brainer for the jury to, uh, to come back and say uh, not guilty. <laughs> Um, anyway, so that, that's an example of how I was able to use the state's own expert against them. That's a concrete example. Now, typically in a DUI case, uh, the state is not required, at least in Kentucky, we have, uh, we have a case that says, uh, as long as the machine was properly calibrated. And again, there's, there's a different, there's different types of calibration. You have the calibration verification, which the machine goes through every uh, every uh, time that you're about to do a test. But there's also the calibration that it must go through when the technician visits and, and calibrates the machine. And then uh, there's another type of calibration, which we will talk about. So it's simply by the officer saying, well, I calibrated the machine five minutes before Mr. Smith blew into the device. And it came back clean. Well, the problem is, officer, if if the calibration of the machine, not not the calibration verification, which you did, but if the calibration was done improperly, then you, you've heard the term garbage in, garbage out. If you have the entire process screwy, then every result that will come after that is all going to be bad, 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 bad right? So garbage in, meaning if the calibration is improper, the calibration verification, even though it's going to say, correct, everything passed, everything passed, everything passed, the reality is since the inception was failed, every other subsequent test performed and every subsequent calibration uh, performed is going to be a fail because of that initial fail. Um, oh, hey, Dragonfly, it's been a while. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, I think I haven't seen you in all, it feels like a year actually. Um, so anywho, uh, that that's a, a prime example of where I was able to use the state's own expert against them. Like I was starting to say, uh, the majority of cases in Kentucky, at least, uh, the state is not required, even in a breathalyzer uh, case where there is a breathalyzer result to call on an expert witness, which I very strongly disagree with, but they try and sometimes they do get away with it more than you can imagine, to simply have the officer testify that what they performed was proper. Uh, they did the calibration check, which is complete horse crap. Uh, and therefore the machine was properly functioning at the time that Mr. Smith blew into the device. Um, so you may have cases where there's a breathalyzer result in Kentucky. Again, I must qualify it each time because every state is different. Um, 
in Kentucky, they may only have one witness, even in the breathalyzer. I had that in Oldham County in, in June. That was a classic example. Let's talk about other types of, of experts that one might have. So we got the breathalyzer technician, which again, even calling him an expert could be a misnomer. Uh, I, I've learned in this profession very early on, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who disagree with me. Uh, if the, you know, the state trying to qualify him as an expert, is he an expert? Should I completely just roll over and allow them to call him an expert? I pick my battles very intelligently. I do not waste my energy where I do not feel that it's going to be beneficial or conducive for me to win the case. So if I feel that I can convert, like I did in that case, the expert into becoming my own expert, then what do I care? If they, I want them to qualify him as that because then the words that come out of his mouth come from an expert and to a, a person, a simple person. We got we got a simple individual, like a lay person, can only testify to things within their knowledge, things they've seen, things. This is Rule 701, in case any lawyer, uh, lawyerly aficionados out there. This is things that you've seen, you heard, you you smelled. Uh, that you can testify. Anybody can testify. Yeah, I saw that happen. I, I smelled smoke, and I, I thought there was a fire. Uh, objection. <laughs> Witness is speculating. You know, right there. You can't. I thought there was a fire. You can't testify to that because it's not something that you actually saw. I saw fire at five minutes later. Okay, now we have confirmation. You saw there was fire. You know that sort of thing. So, uh, an expert can testify. This is Rule Seven Hundred Two again for you, you aficionados out there. 702 allows an individual who has no personal experience to testify about it because they have the requisite background to talk about something of this nature. So another expert that I want to get into is the retrograde extrapolation or relation back expert. Same thing. Retrograde extrapolation or relation back means at 12 o'clock midnight, individual blows 0.097 at the station the accident occurred at 11 o'clock on the dot the allegation is the, the they had one drink at 10 50 p.m let's say now you have a situation where you could have an expert testify that the 0.097 although blown at midnight would have been a 0.031 at the time of the accident. Why? Because they're relating back by a simple calculation, which is a rough calculation, but still a calculation, that they're going to be below 0.08 10 minutes after drinking. Okay. That is a, a classic, uh, a classic example of uh, how you could use a retrograde extrapolation expert. Now, the reverse could be true as well. Your client blows 0.045 five or six hours after the accident. The prosecutor calls a retrograde extrapolation expert stating that five hours prior, based on this number at this elimination rate, the individual would have been a 0.2 at the time of the accident. So retrograde extrapolation can go either way. It can go... To help you, it can go to hurt you. So uh, that's another one that you would need to qualify. Now, this one is a little bit more difficult because a retrograde extrapolation, uh, retrograde extrapolation experts are usually going to be uh, forensic uh, chemists um, or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Some of them are forensic pathologists. Uh, but the, the majority of them have a background in either chemistry or pathology. So that expert is, uh, is going to have a whole lot of, of points under their belt. Some of them are even, uh, JDs, Juris Doctors. So they went to law school, may not necessarily be lawyers. I, I found one. It's actually, I'm very, very, very lucky. Uh, Harry, here's a plug in for you, Harry. Harry B. Plotnick, uh, is a lawyer out of, uh, excuse me, is, a forensic pathologist out of Cincinnati. He does have, he's only about an hour and a half away from Louisville. So that's fantastic. I can call him 
in to uh, to come in and testify on 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 cases here in Louisville. He just needs to drive. I don't even need to pay for a plane ticket, just a hotel room and, and a car ride. Uh, and he would come in and he could testify to a lot of these things that I'm mentioning. Um, and we actually hired him on one of our currently pending cases. So that's another type of expert that uh, you you could you could have. Now, another expert, which I have not had any personal experience with just yet, but eventually I'm absolutely certain will come into play, is the state's reconstructionist or reconstruction experts. They're more common in civil cases like car accidents when you're suing an insurance company trying to recover monetary damages where the police officer who has no experience in this, no offense, but it's true, has that drawing where based on what unit one told me, which I can 100% trust, uh-huh, right, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, what else? And then unit two told me this, so I kind of created a middle ground and this is what probably happened, or I don't know, I just kind of trust, they'll never admit to it. I kind of trust unit one over unit two. I kind of trust unit two over unit one. So here's the story and then here's the drawing of how it happened. And then uh, let's say if this is a case with death or very serious injuries, one side hires a reconstruction experts and the reconstruction expert looks at this and, and, and looks at all the photos of the scene and goes, no, none of this happened. Here's why. And here's what it should be. So in a DUI case, you can imagine a reconstruction expert might be necessary if it were a manslaughter case, for instance, or a, um, uh, a murder, a alleged murder uh, with a DUI. So uh, a lot of these uh, can come into effect and come into play uh, when it comes to uh, reconstruction. Now, again, in a DUI case, I've never had one yet. Uh, I haven't had a, ca a case that's uh, so serious that requires one, but I'm sure eventually it's, it's only a matter of time when I will finally have uh, have the opportunity to 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 do that. So that that's on the state side. Let's talk about uh, your own expert as the defendant. Uh, by the way, also one more time, uh, sorry, I got to plug this in. Don't forget to like this video, comment below once uh, the video is done being live, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell uh, so that you get notifications when when I go, uh, when a new video premieres or I go, go live or uh, what have you. So your own expert. Your own expert uh, could also, uh, you, you could turn, like I said, you can turn the, the breath technician, the breathalyzer technician into your own expert in that case, like, the, like I did. Um, we talked about the calibration is not the same as validation of the calibration, which is what the officer does every time they, they, they allow the machine to do its calibration check. The actual calibration, that's what I would like to call it, calibration validation or calibration check. The calibration is what the breathalyzer technician does on a monthly basis, 30 to 45 days. Um, so you can turn the breath expert like I did in, in that military uh, uh, client's case in Hardin County in 2015. Uh, and you you don't have the video to this one, but uh, we actually hired uh, a an expert in, in one of our cases, and um, it, it didn't go as well as I had hoped. Uh, unfortunately, she was convicted. Uh, our expert, I, I, I don't know, I think he could have gotten a little bit stronger on certain points, but it was a learning experience for me, uh, and and I he, he was talking about uh, the the partition ratio, or we attempted to talk about the partition ratio because I had a female client, and it is very well known in the scientific community that uh, partition ratios for women are lower than they are uh, for men. Not only that, the national average for partition ratios for females is lower than the, than the machine standard, which is 2100 to 1. So here's basically what this means. Look at it this way. It's a mathematical equation. It's a very basic one. You're comparing and contrasting two numbers. So 2,100 to 1. For every 2,100 molecules of breath, I'm, I'm going to butcher this because it's been a while since I've looked at it, so I apologize ahead of time. But the conversion, essentially, the 2,100 to 1 is the the, the breath to the, the one that the machine actually tests, I believe. Don't quote me on this. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to be butchering this, unfortunately. Um, 
because the machine is testing your your breath at 210 liters uh at 210 liters conversion rate so you can imagine obviously we cannot breathe 210 liters of air so it multiplies but here's the main point the our female who was fairly small we tried to argue that the machine so if her partition ratio at that given time when she was blowing into the machine was let's say 1600 to one that's 500 less but you have to it, it, it that's not enough you have to multiply and divide so you just take that number, you would multiply by by uh, whatever her partition ratio is, and then divide by 2100. So like a 0 0.100 would turn into a, like a 0 0.076 or something like that. You know what I mean? That was the idea behind it. And we were going to have an expert to testify to that effect, but uh, something problematic happened. The prosecutor argued to the judge that Kentucky does not allow partition ratios to be this, to be used in court which is complete nonsense uh he simply test said that uh argued that uh, there's a case out there and the, ju the judge didn't even let me open my mouth the judge said yeah yeah i remember something like that i'm like your honor where what case is he talking about where is this case i that's what i wanted to say but the judge simply just took it and said yeah i remember a case like that yeah yeah i do i remember a case like that and uh, counsel, you're not permitted to talk about partition ratio. That's it. So I was like, I was stunned. You know, that was our whole theory of the case. Now it's thrown out the window. So I had my expert testify about the alveolar capillaries and, and he, he tried to, I remember his description of being an upside down tr uh, tree. If you want to look at it that way, cause it really does. If you take your lungs and you kind of just look at the, the alveolars, they kind of look like a tree and how. I don't know. He tried to go in a completely different way, but unfortunately, that didn't work. Uh, she ended up getting convicted. No jail time. Didn't really um, matter at that point because she was she was uh, she lost anyway. But we tried. That was my first attempt at hiring an expert. I've I've not had one since, and up until this one, like I said, Mr. Plotnik, Dr. Plotnik, uh, whom I've hired, and um, I foresee a lot of more more cases in my career where we're going to be having experts testify because a lot of times it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible to win a case just on its bare facts. Uh, you do need somebody with the requisite experience, knowledge, expertise to testify and give evidence to lay the foundation for the jury to understand as to who, what, where, when, why, and how things happen. So you may have a blood result, Mr. Prosecutor or Ms. Prosecutor, but it doesn't mean squat, and here's why. And to fill that in, I can't testify. You know, objection counsel is testifying. I've heard that more times than I would like to admit. Because even though I do have all this knowledge, I do have all these diplomas and awards and, and seminars that I've attended, and I know more than the average DUI, uh, the, the, more than the average attorney, and definitely uh, within the realm of, of DUI lawyers, I'm starting to get more and more up there because I've been going to seminars, reading books, et cetera, and all this stuff. I can't testify. And if the client cannot afford an expert, well, now we're stuck because the only option is, unfortunately, a lot of times to plead guilty, which as much as I don't want to do, Unfortunately, sometimes that's the only option out if the client cannot afford trial or cannot afford a lawyer uh, or an expert, excuse me. So uh, those are the types of experts that uh, one could have uh, for both sides. So again, just to recap before we get into questions and answers, and again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Before uh, you put an expert on the stand, understand that their job is to explain as simply as they can to the men and women in your jury box or the judge in layman's terms, in simple terms. You do not want an expert rambling on in medical terminology without explaining it. It's going to make the jury feel stupid, and when jurors feel stupid, they feel like you're mocking them and when they feel like you're mocking them you understand where that leads so 
you always want to lay the foundation. Who are you? What are you? Why are you qualified? What are your qualifications? What have you been doing? Where did you go to school? What all of that will lay the foundation as to who they are and why can they testify about this particular subject. Then once the foundation has been laid, then you can start going into, uh, and they're, they're qualified as an expert witness by the court if there's no objection. If there is an objection, then you will hash it out with the court, maybe go into a Daubert hearing and so on. Or if you're a Fry State, I honestly don't know, do you do Fry hearings or how does that work? Because I'm not a, I've never studied Fry other than in law school for, for like a, a day or something. So because we're a Daubert state, everything goes through Daubert. Um, and don't forget that pretty much anybody can be qualified as an expert. Your neighbor's grandma, who's been knitting for 30 years, can be qualified as a knitting expert. Believe it or not. Someone like a real estate agent who drives all the time, I'm just making this up, in theory, could be somehow somewhere qualified as an expert on road safety and how you properly drive your vehicle because they have thousands upon thousands of hours uh, behind the wheel. They spend so, and if, if they drive with safety and they have a clean record, again, my first question would be, how many tickets do you have? You know, if the answer is zero, well, crap, that's a really, really good expert. Even though they're not, they're in no way, shape, or form. They're not a CDL driver. They don't have a professional license. That was probably a bad example. But I'm just giving you a hypothetical to where anybody <clears throat> could be qualified for something that they're regularly participate in or regularly an activity that they regularly do. That's basically the. So when you think expert witness, it doesn't have to be a doctor or a medical scientist or your next door, like I said, grandmother. Patsy can take the stand and testify on why the sweaters that this company has bought are falling apart because the knitting technique that they were using is improper. And here's why, because I've been knitting for 30 years. You're supposed to go under, over, over, under. They were going under, under, over, over. You know, simple little thing I just made up. But now you have a grandmother testifying as an expert to try and destroy this conglomerate making sweaters. So anything is possible. Anybody could qualify as an expert witness if they are familiar, have the background, knowledge, understanding of the topic. So now that we've been talking for quite a while, I want to open the floor up for questions. Uh, Snap Malloy asks, uh, do you just have to convince the jury that this person is a qualified witness? No. Uh, qualified expert witness, I think is what you're meaning to ask. No, Snap Malloy. What, as I've said, uh, the, the, first of all, the qualification will, un unless it's, it's under question, uh, or even if it is not under question, will typically be held either uh, in front of the jury and then the motion to qualify the witness as an expert witness is always decided by the court. The jury does not decide that. The jury only decides guilt or innocence of the individual being uh, allegedly uh, alleged to have committed the crime. The judge will decide whether or not the individual and the witness stand is to be qualified as an expert witness. Great question, by the way. I thought I made that clear. If I haven't, I apologize. Now you know. Let's see. How can they say? What happens if cop make false statements in the report asks Instagram? What happens if cop, well, you, you take the case to trial and you impeach the crap out of them. And I'm just going to wait for some more questions. Obtuse one says, I impeached the county expert brought by a plaintiff in a high altitude photographs in a civil case. She attempted to testify. She could tell which lawnmower mowed each yard. That sounds like an interesting case, actually. Very bizarre.
uh, Charlie, Charlie Martinez. Sometimes the defendant doesn't have money to pay expert witness fees. It's interesting. The court won't consider that certain knowledge is made public by medical journals, i.e. GERD defense. Uh, GERD is the gastrointestinal uh, reflux disease. That's when uh, an individual regurgitates from the stomach contents, contents that come out. Uh, into the mouth area. So when they exhale into the machine, it artificially elevates the result. Very common uh, in, in uh, a lot of people. Acid reflux is also, as it's known, GERD. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's you say public, public knowledge, certain knowledge made public. Again, I guess different minds may differ. I guess you haven't been you haven't seen some of my jurors where all they know is the city where they're in and they don't know anything else. Uh, so in order to compensate for that, uh, unfortunately, uh, an expert witness, a body in the witness stand is necessary because, again, counsel cannot testify. And unless my own witness, I have seen this done, not by me, by other people. Uh, if the witness excuse me, if my client would be like a doctor, let's say, you could qualify your own defendant as the expert witness in their own case. I know a lawyer were in the building where I used to work who did exactly that when she was a, a defense attorney in, back in Florida. She qualified, her, her, her uh, client was charged with a DUI and he was a doctor, and I believe there was an accident in that case, and he suffered from a concussion. And he testified as an expert witness. She qualified him. She laid out the foundation, qualified him as an expert witness. The state couldn't do anything about it because he had all the requisite qualifications in that field. And so he testified both as a layperson. This would be the one situation where that would happen about the facts and circumstances of that case from his own perspective as a layperson. And he also testified about his own case as the expert witness in his own case. Again, a result that to duplicate would probably take a millennia take to get a, 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 a set of facts like that, but it has been done. I know of at least one case where it has been done. So when you say, uh, Charlie Martinez, that uh, yes, the, the, typically people don't uh, aren't able, the average person isn't able to afford an expert witness uh, it's true, uh, especially in when you get to civil cases. I mean, medical malpractice, especially. Just hiring experts could run up fifty, sixty, eighty-five thousand dollars just out of, and this is out of pocket. You're, if you lose, you don't get that money back. Uh, if you win, that's when you're able to to recoup expenses. Um, I have a rather Kadori asks. I have a rather general question of real talk nature. Is there any chance a reasonably skilled amateur like a viewer of your channel, for example, actually wins a DUI case pro se? Honestly, not to bash any of you all, very unlikely. Uh, this, this art, and it is an art, takes years to become good at and even longer to master. Uh, so unless you're going to be investing, you know, five years of your life, you can get that time while your case is pending. If you're going to be able to uh, invest five years of your life preparing your case to truly become a, a masterful expert of the craft just for one case, first of all, I applaud you. But secondly, don't do it. Hire a lawyer. OK, there's no point in trying to fight your case yourself because you're biased. You're you're running your case pro se. You're, it already looks bad from every angle. So you have that to look at on top of it. Hire a lawyer, a special lawyer, specialist who does this stuff for a living, you're going to have a much better shot at winning than if you go at it yourself. Uh, no, Ambry Smith, I have not. Uh, have I? Do I have any experience with defamation cases? No. Chris Webster asks, uh, oh, hey, Chris. <laughs> I didn't recognize you there for a second. Uh, can an expert hurt you? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, even your own expert. Uh, if like in that one case that we we just went completely sideways, um, I think there was a question the prosecutor asked him, and I swear to God, it felt like 10 minutes. But the, he, the prosecutor asked him a question, and he took 
I later looked at it. It took him 25 seconds of silence to answer the question. No, 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 no. It sounds like he's fishing, and maybe he was. I don't know. Like I said, that case did not go well. Uh, it was our own expert, and he heard us. Uh, at least he didn't help us win the case. Let's put it that way. I don't know if he heard us specifically, but the state's witness, expert witness, of course, is there to hurt us. Uh, and unless, like I said in the beginning of this uh, live stream, if you're able to convert them into your own, then you're you're going to be able to turn their own witness against them. That's the ideal, if you can. I, I'm a very firm believer in judo law. Rather than when you have bad facts, attorneys like the, their first instinct is how do I keep it out? And they fight tooth and nail. And 99% of the time you will lose. Okay, 99% of, of arguments you will lose unless it's just an extreme uh, to keep something out, especially if it's like video and or stuff like that. Um, so instead, I, I prefer the methodology of judo law of how can I turn, how can I use this bad fact? It's going to be in no matter what, right? How can I turn this bad fact into a good one? Like classic example, accident case, you know, we got, we got airbags deployed, we got all this, and the individual performs very poorly on field sobriety tests. There's a concussion involved. I may not even need an expert witness. Everybody knows this is an, a, a classic example where an expert may not be needed. There's a concussion potentially. Uh, if maybe she, we have medical records that say concussion that I may be able to come in, bring in, especially if the prosecutor is already going to be bringing them in for a different purpose. Uh, let's say for like uh, a, a BA or use his own expert against him. I was going to do that in one case, but it ended up settling. Um, so that's a classic example of where uh, the uh, the expert witness is not necessary, but you can show that an individual's performance on field sobriety tests was poor due to a medical condition rather than intoxication. Uh, on subpress jury nullification, I have a video. If somebody could please link him, uh, I already did that. Uh, Mike Hunt, uh, can I be my own expert witness if qualified? I just answered that. How much notice? Oh, that's a great question, Sergeant Frank Rock. How much notice does one party has to give to say they have an expert witness to testify? Every state is different. In Kentucky, the rules are not exactly 100% clear. Uh, but I think, at least for the most part, unless the rules are concrete, uh, I'm sure the federal rules, if you read them, they have they have a specific timeline. The federal rules are really good about that. But the state rules, and even more so the, the local jurisdiction rules, may be, um, may be uh, uh, good to look at. But in Kentucky, it's, it's a little fuzzy, and it does give us a lot of leeway to to hide the ball until until fairly close to the last minute which i try not to do again i i don't like winning on technicalities i know i just showed you that trial that i won two and a half years ago uh almost three years ago by a technical that was a complete accident that was a complete surprise to me uh, i'm much rather because i feel it, even the military by the way the military does not recognize technicalities if, if the case has been dismissed they sometimes will not recognize that dismissal as merits for um uh, not issuing a GOMAR, which is the general uh, order of meritorial reprimand, uh, or uh, imposing a, a punishment on uh, other types of punishment on a military individual. They only recognize not guilty by a jury. Fun fact. So uh, even if you win uh, on a case, sometimes technicalities are not the, the best way to go. Uh, let's see what other questions we have. VB all out. <laughs> if I have eight DUIs, am I qualified as an expert witness in drunk driving? Uh, you definitely qualify as an expert witness in getting caught. Um, but I think if you have no DUIs, you can still qualify as a expert in drunk driving, if you're going to testify that you've been drunk driving every night for the past 1,000 nights, you don't need to have a, a conviction to be, as long as the jury believes you. Don't forget uh, credibility 
and um, the the BS detectors are always there. Common sense is always there. So if if the jury the jury is always going to be there to decide whether or not they believe whoever is testifying, because you can be the best expert witness in the world, but if your credibility is shot to pieces, no one's going to believe you, and your testimony is worthless. Uh, again, don't forget to like this video, comment below, and subscribe to the channel, and, and hit that uh, notification bell so that you can get notified if you uh, once new videos go up. Good luck with that case, Charlie Martinez. <laughs> Saturday night, are you on standby for clients? I am Hike America. Uh, I am. If I get that phone call, I am going to be helping people out. Persuasion can beat logic. That's true. You lose your license for... Uh, 120 days, which is four months for refusing to blow in Kentucky. Uh, Frank Schultz auditing news. And yeah, uh, that's the, exactly right. Scott Hansen says, in my cousin Vinny, Vinny got his girlfriend, who is a hairdresser. There it is. Classic example. A hairdresser qualified as an expert witness in general automotive repair. Why? Because her and her dad were... Uh, she, she's been working on vehicles for for like a decade, and she knows vehicles. She understands vehicles. She understands tires. And then when the prosecutor try, was on cross examination, said, so, "Well, you're you're just you're just you know the housewife with what do you know about tires?" And she schooled the crap out of him, didn't she? And that's that's exactly what what I'm talking about here. So great, great, great point, Scott Hansen. Uh, Obtuse one, would you take a look at the case sometimes in Bowling Green? Email me, Larry at LarryFormanLaw.com. It's on my channel, on my website. It's everywhere. Email me, not here. Sorry, I'm still reading the comments to see if there are any more questions. There are lots of comments today. I, this is a popular topic, too. I guess I really underestimated it. What should you do if stopped for a DUI? Robert Newman, you're a little late to the party. I already said that's going to be the topic for next Saturday's video in uh, 167 hours. That's going to be me live talking about that. Law can be technicalities sometimes. Mark Miller, that is true. Question. Oh, this might be interesting. Uh, Pontiac Grand Prix. Question from a cop here. What do you think are the most common mistakes police make when testifying on the stand? Ooh, oh, that is a great question. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you asked it. Um, and this is going to be a probably preparing you maybe in the future to testify. So one of the most common mistakes I see is that police officers will not and will completely and adamantly refuse, which I love when they do that, but it really hurts you as a person and it hurts the, the state's case. And I, I honestly, I don't even like when, when you do it because you're, you're just helping me win almost on, on technicality where I do want to win on, on the facts, but it does help. So the, the most common mistake is you won't admit the obvious. When I start asking an obvious question and you'll start walking circles around it. Well, that's not exactly what I'm just asking for. Yes or no. Well, that's not exactly what I'm the, the, the officer. It's a yes or no question. Sometimes I'll even get the court to intervene. Trooper, will you please answer? Yes or no? Yes. It's a qualified. Yes. But I'm, I had this one case and it's the, it's the, the one out of bell County where, I mean, I, the trooper on the stand said something, and then I asked him the question, do you remember on direct, exa on direct examination, uh, you were asked this, and you said this? No, I don't remember. So you don't remember saying this. I don't remember. 
I looked at the clerk. Can we roll tape, play it back to the jury? We, we rolled tape. We rewinded. We played it to the jury. We played it once. Okay, so do you remember now that you said exactly what we just freaking heard? No, I did not. Okay, play it again. I played it five times. Five times until I finally gave up. This schmuck just would not leave it alone. I looked at the jury and I said, did you all hear it? All six of them were literally sitting there going like that because they were aggravated that this idiot won't admit the simple fact that he made a stupid comment that is hurting his case. And rather than admitting it and moving on, he made such a huge deal out of it, which made the jury pay attention to it all that much more. And again, it was a win, 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 win situation for me because the fact was bad. They've heard it now seven or eight times, so they're super paying attention to it. I have a trooper who won't admit his own mistake. Now his credibility is shot to pieces. I mean, with one phrase, he destroyed the majority of the state's case and his credibility on top of that. So for the love of God, just the most common mistake is not admitting the simple. And the second one is don't try to argue with the lawyer. If the lawyer is good, he chances are he knows a whole lot better than you. And if you're going to try and argue, you're always going to lose. Um, so try, and, and sometimes you'll, you're about to, to get cornered and you don't even realize you're going to get cornered. You'll never be able to prepare yourself for that. We, we're masters of the trade of cornering you into a position to where after you answer yes to 12 questions, the 13th question is inevitable. And the 13th question, because there's no way you cannot answer yes to the previous 12. And the 13th is going to have to be yes and if you try to, to get away from the 13th one being yes, you're you're going to walk into a wall and you're going to look stupid. Again, this is what lawyers do. We're, we're masters of the craft of, of cross-examination and oratory skills. At least the good ones are. So fantastic question, by the way. And, and very rarely, but sometimes officers will be qualified as expert witnesses since we're this is the topic for the day. Uh, your expert witnesses on uh, maybe crime scene investigation uh, and like what is the procedure when there's when there's a murder that has occurred you know you're a detective what is the protocol what are you supposed to do you may not even be called an expert witness but you're testifying from an expertise perspective that not many people know so that's that's a great question I hope I hope I answered it uh, I, I tried to the best of my ability uh, Frank Stein in the Stagnus test even is good. Uh huh. Just made an appointment. Just if you don't want to answer something. Uh, Kadori, just a general question. Do you sometimes know for certain that your client is guilty? Sure. Uh, I have a lot of, in, but again, you got to be careful with that word guilty. It, if my client admits uh, their their guilt, if you will, um, in my office, the prosecution still must, not maybe, but must prove their guilt beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. So them admitting guilt doesn't mean anything uh, in my office. Let's see, I was looking to buy some land across the river, don't know. You're dragging your feet on Matt Forker. That's premiering tomorrow at noon. Zero for you. If the court recognizes an expert witness, is it wise to challenge that in front of the jury? Absolutely not. Because then you're making yourself look foolish. Snap Malloy. Uh, well, Mark Miller says, I, I would think police officers, the most common mistake is perjury. Almost every case I've seen aggravated perjury is committed. You got to be careful again, using the word perjury. Uh, perjury is when you, uh, lock yourself into testimony. And then in another hearing, you, um, uh, you say something that is contrary to what was said before or written before in a sworn affidavit some states luckily they do have sworn affidavits for police officers so when they fill in the the uniform citation is actually a sworn affidavit 
not in Kentucky. It's just a uniform citation. So if they testify to something other than what's written in the paper, then they're not perjuring themselves. Uh, but they just lie. It's called test the lying. Look it up. All right. Did you hear of the video of the 80 year old arrested for suspicion of driving under medicine? I'm not 100% I, I, that I've heard of that risk disabled writer. Uh, detailed 48, six jury members in district court. Uh, it's 12 in circuit, 13 sometimes with the alternative. We'll have trials where we do seven with an alternative. An alternative is there just to, in case the, um, in case the one of the jurors, if the case goes on more than a day, if they're not, if they don't show up, and if we have, we're down to five, we have to literally start over. If we can't get our sixth, if they disappear because they're sick or missing or haven't come to court on day two, then we have a serious problem. And uh, judges will often assign al alternates uh, just in case. Uh, if you're having a morality issue, F, if you're an attorney who's having a morality issue representing people guilty of a DUI, then don't do criminal cases. You belong in the civil world. Know your territory, know thyself. Officer, I found Texas. Officer should never say he doesn't recognize the defendant in court. Yeah, luckily we fell upon a very honest cop. And uh, he just led his case into oblivion by doing that. Uh, I've seen the video. Uh, no, the police are clearly caught lying. Have I ever been pulled over? Sure, for speeding. Uh, sometimes I get a ticket. Sometimes they give me a warning. But I haven't gotten a ticket in like a year. Let's keep it that way. I try not to speed. It's not worth it. The doc says she should. Does Stevening, this is an interesting point you bring up. It would undermine the lawyer's confidence if they admit guilt in my office. Hmm. I try to build them up. I try to tell them. I mean, it's it's kind of hard. It, it's more, it undermines their own confidence because they're like, listen, I did it. I'm guilty. Can we plea? And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Maybe we can do something. And then they're like, well, what can we do? And then if I can convince them, let, let's at least try. Sometimes they go with the flow. Sometimes they don't. It's up to them. We can never, remember this, the lawyer can never go above their client. So if the lawyer's like, we got a winnable case. We can win this. I can win this. And the client's like, no, I just want to plea. I'll never be able to try the case. I'll, I'll have to plea. Uh, I resemble, oh my goodness, Gregory Hatton. I am humbled because in no way, shape, or form could I ever, ever equate myself to the master of all masters. Uh, you say, I'm truly humbled, sir. You resemble a modern version of Jerry Spence. Oof. If oh my goodness. That's that you just took my breath away. I'm not joking. That's that's a serious, serious compliment. I'm nowhere near. I don't feel like I'm anywhere near. I mean, the guy has an unbeatable track record. What 40 years? Not a single guilty verdict. I mean, that is and he tried some serious or not guilty. I'm sorry. Uh, he lost a few criminal cases, but then civil in the civil realm, he did nothing but win. I mean, the guy's a machine, a machine. Oh, my goodness. Um, we've been going on an hour and 15 minutes, and we're nowhere near finishing the questions. This is really popular. Uh, what about when they cannot get enough blood out of your veins? Haven't had that issue yet, Cali dude. Uh, at some point, maybe we will, but uh, that's definitely a, a, a blood case where we're going to have an issue. 
unsub press says challenging an expert witness makes it look like you're afraid of them. Not necessarily unsub press. If you're challenging an expert witness's opinion, not qualification, their opinion, then uh, and you're able to to use that same type of language that you would use, uh, that they would use. Excuse me. Then you're going to be able to make maybe the expert look foolish. Um, but if you're qualifying, you know, you're trying to disqualify them as an expert after they've already been qualified by the court. Yeah, that's, that's kind of stupid. Unless you really have something going for you. Well, are you aware that in 1975, when you allege that you have completed the education at this school, this school was uh, discredited by the American Medical Association in 1993? Whoa, 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 whoa. So he went to a school that at the time was accredited. Now it's no longer accredited. Uh, ding, 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 ding. I think we got a winner, you know? That's one example. Um, more of an Eli Gold, <laughs> Frank Stein. I appreciate that, man. That's, uh, oh my God, what's his name? Uh, I've been, I've been called, oh, I have to, I have to look this up. This is going to kill me. The actor in, uh, who plays Eli Gold, Alan Cummings, Alan Cummings. I've been told that I, I, I'm kind of like a doppelganger, a younger version of, of Alan Cumming. I don't see it, but I've heard it a few times. Um, what does beyond a reasonable doubt mean? Google it, Spardisa. We're not allowed to define it in Kentucky, so uh, it, for my purposes, I don't even care. Uh, I may have already covered this as Joshua Illegal. What, at what point would law enforcement officer lose qualified immunity? This is more... A, when it comes to civil cases, when you're trying to sue them, again, not a topic for this particular um, uh, oh my gosh, so many questions. What, what job did I have before I became a lawyer? I was a horse trainer, Sean McBride, for the family. Can you practice anywhere? No, Shane, only in Kentucky. Uh, test the line. How do you feel about per se DUI? That's a question. I'm trying to stay on topic here. Come on. Help me out here. Person is unconscious, implied consent still valid, says Sergeant Franks. Sometimes, depending on what state you're in. How do you beat a speeding ticket? Maybe I'll do a video on this, Robert, someday. How often are clients arrested for a DUI when they're completely innocent? FJR Nate. A lot. A lot more often than you might think. It's kind of scary. Don't forget to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that you can be notified of uh, uh, when new videos show up. I got seven years. Yeah, that's a that's a great joke. Bad luck for breaking a mirror. I got seven years for bad luck for breaking a mirror. My attorney said he could get me five. Classic, classic, Cali dude. All right, let's see. Why do defendants plead guilty or not guilty that you are innocent? That's just courtroom nomenclature. You cannot plead innocent. You can argue my client is innocent, but uh, you never plea innocent, innocence. Unfortunately, you plead not guilty. Um, can I get pulled over for going under the speed limit? I got pulled over in the storm at New Year at 2 a.m. Yeah, well, that's why you got pulled over because it was New Year at 2 a.m. for going under. They'll look for any way to any reason to pull you over. Um, I think I lost all my mods, detoed 48. Sorry, I had to take care of that issue myself. And yes, Alan Cumming. Uh, da, 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 da. I had a couple mods, I think they all left. I, I've been rambling on too long um 
All right, we're almost, we're already at an hour and 20 minutes. Holy crap. Uh, I s younger drivers, can you tell us what is my win percent ratio so far? About 90%. All cases I've actually uh, needed to win about 90% victory rate. Um, while trying to challenge a case, have you heard one of those? While trying to challenge a case, have you ever had one of those aha moments that quickly changed the course of the case that you capitalized on successfully? Liam Morris, yeah, you're a little late to the party. I kind of talked about that. Um, I had that case in 2015. Uh, thank you, Harley. No, I appreciate that. Uh, I really want to finish up before the 130 mark. I'm curious on expert witnesses in a DMV hearing. I don't think they're allowed. We don't have DMV hearings in Kentucky, so I'm not the best person to ask. Please keep, <laughs> keep rambling, says Frank Stein. I appreciate it. Um, how do I find a good lawyer if in custody? That's difficult to have somebody who's on the outside who can help you, that you can trust. Fine. This is another. My vlog number three is going to premiere probably in a week or so. Uh, where I talk about how to find a good lawyer. And, uh, I, I discuss how you need to find yourself a trial lawyer, trial lawyer, because trial lawyers are the ones who are truly masters of their craft and they're going to be able to, to help you. Ones who do nothing but plea, you, you lose out on that. And I explain why in that video. So that will premiere uh, in a little while here. What to do if you're pulled over and the officer says they smell alcohol? Scanny land the great. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, that's going to be the topic next week, next Saturday. So tune in. Uh, when self-representing, go pro per, not pro se. It's the same thing, Cali dude. Pro se, pro per. They're synonyms. Uh, if uh, Elmont, if you need. Thank you, Unsub Press. I'll consider it. Do all states allow witnesses before the test? I don't understand what that means, Kelly Mellows. Uh, that's why I don't drive New Year's. Smart. Uh, that's why uh, Massachusetts stuff for DUI cases, probably. By the way, if you have a DUI in your home state and it's not Kentucky, email me, message me, Facebook, Twitter, Schmitter, email, whatever. Uh, I know some of the best DUI lawyers in the country in each respective state, that I, so I can refer you. Don't hesitate. I always respond. Uh, one time we were drunk into motorized scooters. Can they give us a DUI? Yes, they can. Sean McBride, motorized scooters are still a motorized vehicle. Oh, Pontiac Grand Prix is back. Uh, another question from a cop. What do you feel is both the most common mistake police make when administering the standardized field sobriety tests? Also, what do you feel is the biggest flaw with the test? Well, I think the tests are flawed, period, because if you look at the data, the, the data does not support the findings, okay? Because in order for it to be a proper scientific study, you have to have appropriate data to support the appropriate finding. Well, the findings that they, they found is that these tests are accurate in determining as to whether or not an individual is impaired by alcohol. Problem is, if you look at the data, the data is completely skewed. The, the, the ages of the individuals that they used uh, are like 21 to 35. And, and the, the allegations are that the, the tests can be used for anyone up to 65. And they only out of that sample, like 60 and above, they only had two individuals or something like that in that age range. So that's completely unscientific already right there. Um, another problem that they had that was a very serious problem is that the, the breathalyzer results if I remember correctly, I don't remember the exact numbers, but they're all very skewed. They're individuals who were highly intoxicated. They're like 0.2 and above, a lot of them. Uh, some of the individuals that get pulled over now can be at the 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11. Those are the most common results, more, again, more or less. Uh, so are the test's not the best to determine impairment. And uh, to answer your first question, the most common mistakes when they administer the standardized field sobriety tests they don't use their common sense. They just use their sheet of paper that says, I'm looking for this clue and this clue and this clue and this clue. So when, when you're taking the stand and you're starting to testify that you saw all this stuff 
and then I get out my own grade sheet, I can prove, not just suggest, not just imply, not just kind of sort of maybe have uh, a direction. I can literally prove, P-R-O-V-E, to the jury that my client passed the field sobriety test. And I have done that. And it's very easy to do if you know what you're doing and if you have a good video. Uh, and I can show, and th that makes you look like a liar. And that's all I need. If they don't believe you and they think that you are, you've tried to cheat my, my client out of, uh, uh, passing the field sobriety test, you will lose a hundred percent of the time. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to finish up here <laughs> with more questions coming. Uh, some cases can go. Yeah. Four months sitting in a running car. Is sitting in a running car considered operating a motor vehicle? Frank Schultz, Auditing News. Yes, in in some states like Pennsylvania, New York, not in Kentucky. Um, that's why I asked the question. Please ask the rules. Oh, hey, Rookser. Yeah, I try to respond uh, as as much as I can. I was ordered to give me the driving. I'm traveling. I do not consent. I don't know. There, the the whole driving versus traveling still eludes me. Uh, typical lawyer, right? <laughs> uh, eventually, maybe I'll catch on to that whole argument, but we'll see. Uh, if what type of law do you practice? What type of law will you practice when all cars are self driving? Probably do wills and estates. I think that seems kind of fun. Uh, you can make some serious money and uh, you get to help people plan for their future. Uh, do like trusts, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Really interested in your thoughts about. Really interested in your thoughts on James Dwayne and the right to remove. Well, we really deviated from the expert topic. <laughs> Like really deviated. We're just like opening the floor to everything. Um, the assertion that the fifth is not this, is imperative of guilt makes requirement to identify a problem. When you plead, basically, I think the, the argument goes: when you plead the fifth, you're already like you're you're already admitting guilt. Sure, but I, I don't see a way around that without pleading the fifth and without trying to be sly about your answer, which you're going to lose anyway. Did I see the video of the cop that was passed out drunk in his patrol car? No. I, I know that article came out, detoed 48, but I did see the the the, the article. Mark Miller says I got a blue a 0.081 and got a DUI, which was uh, BS. I was sober since the day I was born. Some other substances may trigger uh results such as if you're chewing gum smoking cigarettes tobacco can trigger it uh that sort of thing this is an important question because i am on pretrial for my case is it considered a technicality if the officer fails to collect your insurance and registration i uh, don't think so unless you're being charged with it nefarious 520 if you get a DUI in Trimble, Oldham, or Henry counties, I think the best reason we price attorney is Edward Bourne. I know that name. He he might he might be good. I don't know. I don't. I, I'm trying to put a face to that, but I don't know. Uh, keys for your car within reach. You have. Yeah. By the way, there's this phrase. Uh, point away to so subjective. Rookser says you can have one person showing signs of an abbreviation. Point away. Point of weight, what's that phrase that I recently learned? Um, the, the blood result never shows impairment. It is just, it, it really is a technicality. Now, it's going to be difficult to prove to a jury if they're above point of weight because per se, it's very difficult to, to, to lose for a prosecutor, very easy to win. If they blow above a point of weight, all they need is point of weight plus driving equals guilty. And that arguing against that is just very difficult, but it does not show impairment. Um. <laughs> Tasman says I would become a millionaire if I moved to Nevada. Who knows? Probably. I don't know. I, I'm not licensed there. Um, K 
Can the cops use booking video against me in court? Can they record me? Absolutely, Jose Medina. Uh, Nefarious 520, I'm, I'm, I have too much. I can't keep up. I'm about to close this out. and then it, I'm, We're already at hour 30-minute mark. I really want to wrap this up. Do you think, yes, I think DUI laws will cut down. We'll have less chewing gum if it has alcohol in it detailed. Yes, it can. Hello from New Mexico. Thank you, Harley. No. Can a medical condition, yes, medical condition balance, affecting your balance. Thomas Robinson can uh, show as if you're impaired, even though you're not. Self-driving mode Tesla, don't know if be all out. It will, remains to be seen how that law develops. I think it, it shouldn't, you shouldn't be charged, but again, convicted is different from charged. You probably can be charged, but getting convicted is the question. Is there anything that will immediately, uh, that you, wait, is there anything that will cause you to immediately ask for a juror to be dismissed if they say something like, uh, I think all people are guilty, I guess. I don't know. If the the defendant is sitting in that chair, they probably did something wrong. I would ask for a uh, strike for cause. Uh, put a face to come with me, Ferguson. I'll do that sometime. All right. We're at 131. I really thank you all. For joining How to Be a Breathalyzer, I have a, a blog, F, you are free to look it up, where I talk about it. Um, all right. I am going to stop right here because I think the questions are going to be endless. Again, uh, I want to remind you to please, please, please don't forget to like. Uh, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that you get notified anytime that I go live or I upload something new. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me here today. I always have fun doing these despite the fact that my voice is still a little weak and I have not fully recovered, but I still, um, I'm feeling strong, I'm feeling great. I had fun doing this. I always have fun doing this. I'm going to go live, Sharky, next Saturday at 6 30 p.m eastern standard time we're going to be talking about what to do when if you're when you're behind the wheel and those flashing lights are popping up behind you that's gonna be the most interesting video i think i have ever ever done in my entire career because we get to talk about the most personal thing that you have ever you could possibly uh experience the officer is right there and you are right there what do you do and how to go about the situation, especially if you have question about, well, I don't feel impaired. I don't think I'm impaired. Is he gonna think I'm impaired? I had a glass of wine. How long has it been? It's been 90 minutes? No, it's been two hours. No, has it been an hour? I don't remember. I had steak with dinner. Is that going to affect it? You know, all those questions that we woo, yes. Uh-huh, yes, Frank Schultz. Right then and there, that's going to be the next topic for next Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Coming up next, tomorrow at noon, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, the trial, the, the notorious Matt Forker trial. Um, he's the cop. Matt Forker is the, the arresting officer, is going to be premiering. So from 12 to 5 p.m., Back to back to back to back to back. All those videos are going to go on on uh, YouTube starting at 12, ending at 5 p.m. You don't have to watch them. In, uh, that's, that's just how they're premiering. You can watch them afterwards if you like to skip around. Wait until 5 p.m. tomorrow or 2 p.m. Pacific, uh, and you'll be able to skip around. But if you want to watch it live, I'm going to be there. Uh, not for the full five hours. Uh, I have uh, some other things I need to get taken care of, but I will periodically be checking in and uh, answering any questions you all might have. Uh, I think it's going to be really, really fun tomorrow. Uh, it's the jury trial from January 10th, so about a month ago now. Uh, we it's It's been one of my most fun DUI trials in my entire career. It is, uh, it's got a little bit of everything. It's got a, a, it's got a grandmother witness. 
It's got my client testifying. It's got a cop that becomes all flustered. Um, it's just one of the most fascinating trials. And it's a DUI second on top of everything. So we had a lot, a lot on the line. Uh, a lot, a lot on the line. Um, anyway, uh, I do appreciate you all uh, joining us once again. Uh, we do also have the, the podcast, uh, the live video podcast that's going to be premiering on Tuesday, Tuesday uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So tune in. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. Like I said, I, I have a lot of fun always doing these. Like, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I cannot wait to uh, see you all again, and I will see you on Tuesday and then on Saturday. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.